baseline, and we had battery studios, which was around the corner. Black album was done, it was handed in. My two contributions were December 4th and the intro, which I was fine with. And we're at Battery mixing something. One of my best friends by the name of Big Jack comes in the studio. Y'all got something you gotta hear. Put the headphones on, he puts his record on, and all you heard was dun, 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 dun. I'm just sitting there like, what is about to happen? <laughs> engineer freaks out, he turns around and he's like, yo, what's going on? And I'm like, listen, keep doing what you're doing. So I made the PSA beat in the headphones while the engineer was mixing whatever record we were working on. I made the beat in like 10 minutes. And I ran over to the studio, and Jay had around the corner back to baseline, and Jay had left already. So the next day, Jay's doing uh, listening sessions for the press. For, black, for the black album. Like he had like all the Viacom people there, then he had all the hip hop magazines like Source and Double XL there. It was, it was like different rounds of listening sessions for different people. So when he gets there to start his press run for the day, I'm like, now nah, you gotta come in here. And I play it, and at first his reaction was just like, and I'm like, did you not hear what we're all hearing? Changed the artwork, stop making the CDs. And then he went and started doing press. In between rounds of press, he would come in, drop four bars, go do another press round. Come back in, drop four more bars, go do a press round. Come back in, change, scrap the first eight bars, he did give a whole new eight bars, and add four more bars, and go do another press round. Which means as he's doing the press, he's thinking about this beat in the back of his mind and coming up with, with the song. In between press runs, he lays it all. By the end of the night, he's like, all right, let me hear it. And then he's like, nah, and he walks out. So he comes in the next day, spits the whole thing over in one take, and it was like, add that to the album. Take looking at my S-Dots on. So yeah, scrap looking at my S-Dots, put that on, and then two, weeks after, two, two or three weeks later, we're at the garden and the entire arena knows the words. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Oh, H to the OB. I used to move snows like by the OZ. I guess even back then you could call me CEO of the ROC. There are so many coincidences. I kind of tend to uh, feel like it was something that was supposed to happen because that song was supposed to find its way out to the world. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Oh. This might be my favorite Jay-Z clip, and we do a lot of Jay-Z clips. Man, it just speaks so much about like music and the spirituality of it, and just, when something's for you, man, it's it's for you. And the song's legendary, man, fucking goddamn. You just shower. You know you start itching and shit, dirty ass nigga. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pod. My name is Dorian from group82music.com, and right here we got Just Blaze talking about how the best song on the Black Album, PSA, almost didn't make the Black Album. And I want you to really pay attention to what Jay-Z did here. So he's done, the album's turned in, he's doing listening sessions for the album. You don't do listening sessions for an album back then until it was done, right? Like I'm playing it for the press so the press can get excited about it. They can go write in the magazines about it. The radio stations can talk about it because this is 2003. Like, I want them to be excited. The album's finished, it's done. Just Blaze loved that beat so much. He had been working with Jay-Z for so long that he knew like, yo, nah, you need to hear this shit. Man, it's not, nah, you need to hear this shit. And he played it for him. And as Jay-Z's doing the press runs, and he's talking about all the songs that are on the album, and he's already sequenced the album, and he's already done all these things with the album, that's on his primary thought. But what's on his secondary thought? That beat, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody that makes music, you know once you get a melody stuck in your head, that motherfucker's an earworm. It's just there and it's just on rotate. It's like a, rotate. Rotate. It's on rotate. It's like a DJ is inside of your head and it's just constantly playing a record. So that's one of the secondary thoughts. And his tertiary thoughts, he's writing the song. So in the conscious, in front of him, he's doing press, media, for his final album, his retirement album. His secondary thought, doom, doom, doom. His tertiary thought is the lyrics to doom, doom. It's crazy shit. 
I do shit like that, but I didn't really know that that nigga did shit like that. The song got done, it came out, it's great, it's dope, it's one of his best songs ever. And that goes to show you the spirituality of music. When something is for you, it's for you. Stop forcing songs if it ain't there. Some of y'all right in the comments were like, hey man, I'm a perfectionist, that's why I don't write music anymore. My nigga, I'm not trying to shit on you, I'm just telling you this. You don't write music anymore because you're a perfectionist. You don't write music anymore because you're not supposed to be writing fucking music. Writer's block to me is not a real thing. You might have some days where you're not as sharp with it as others, but you don't get writer's block unless that shit is just not for you. It's not for you. And if everything you listen to is not for you, if every beat you come across is not for you, and this has been going on for three, four, five, six months, a year, you're not a songwriter. You're not a musician. This ain't for you. Get out of it. Stop lying to yourself and making up excuses. Because when something's for you, it's going to find you. Like PSA found Just Blaze and found Jay-Z. Like how Old Town Road found Lil Nas X. I know I keep talking about it, but it's the truth. How all these stories that we posted on Instagram and YouTube about the stories of these songs, how they found the artist, because it was for them. When the song is for you, you know it as soon as you hear it. You know the lyrics as soon as you hear it. As soon as I heard the sunshine beat, I had it. As soon as I heard don't sleep, I had it. As soon as I heard rotate, I had it. As soon as I heard Michael Porter, I had it. I got beats on my computer right now. I've had for years. Can't come up with nothing. Cause it's not for me. It's not for me. Stop forcing shit. Writing music is not this goddamn hard. It's not. If it's not for you, move on. If it is for you, write it and put that shit out. Because that is your contribution to the world and you owe it to us to not be on some Lauryn Hill shit, but to give us the music that the universe has brought to you and the song that's in your hand. If you're an artist who understands what I'm saying, but you need help with the marketing, click that link in the bio on Instagram, purchase more packages for 60% off. Click the link on YouTube in the description box, purchase more packages for 60% off right now. Master Pond, y'all stay true. Group eighty two music dot com dot com dot com dot com